Hello friends, welcome to entranceadvisor.com. In this video, I am going to focus about the reproductive system in the human, especially the male one. Before that, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications as we upload a new video. So let's start. Humans are sexually reproducing and viviparous organisms. There are remarkable differences between the reproductive events and systems in male and female. Male reproductive system includes a pair of testes, uh, accessory ducts, glands and the external genitalia. So, what are testes? There are two testes which produces sperm and sex hormones. The hormones influence the sperm production and secondary sex traits. The testes secrete testosterone which is necessary for proper physical development in the boys. In adulthood, testosterone maintains libido, muscle strength and bone density. Disorders of the testes are caused by too little testosterone production. The testes or testicles are a pair of sperm producing hormones or the organs that maintain the health of the male reproductive system. The testes are known as gonads. Their female counterpart are the ovaries. In addition to their role in the male reproductive system, the testes have the distinction of being an endocrine gland because they secrete testosterone, a hormone that is vital to the normal development of the male physical characteristics. So as you can see in this picture, this is the testes. This is the testes. You refer this picture. The sperm is produced by the seminiferous tubules due to FSH, follicular stimulating hormone. The testosterone is produced by the leading cells due to the LH, luteinizing hormone, which causes the development of the male sex organs in eight weeks after the conceptions. Responsible, this testosterone is responsible for the facial, armpit, and pubic hair, bone growth, and muscular development. The testes formed in the abdomen before birth. They descend through the inguinal canal during the fetal and postnatal life. Sometimes it may take months or years to reach right place, possible site for hernia. Now the epididymis, the sperm maturation and storage takes place here, and the vast differential rapid transport of the sperm, ejaculatory ducts, conducts sperm to penis, and penis is the sexual intercourse organ. You see from this that this is urethra, this is vast difference, and this is prostate gland, this is bladder, this is scrotum, this is penis, this is anus, this is a cross sectional view, and the male accessory ducts include the reti testes, the vas differentia, epididymis, and the vas difference. So the inter testicular duct system starts with a tubuli or rectuli which is short straight and segments of the seminiferous tubules these tubules connect the seminiferous tubules to the highly and cuboidal as anastomosensing and cuboidal epithelium lined channels called the reti testis from the reti testis 10 to 25 fine tubules arise from the vas efferentia that leave the testes and open into the epididymis. Okay, and epididymis leads to the vas deferens that ascends to the abdomen and loops over the urinary bladder. The epididymis stores the sperm until they have matured. As you can see from here, the vas deferens is that is the tube that leads from the epididymis to the urethra, and many sperm cells are stored here too. Urinary bladder receives the duct from the seminal vesicle to form ejaculatory duct that runs to the prostate and opens into urethra. In male, they have a common passage for urine as well as sperm ejaculation. The urethra receives the ducts of the prostate and the bulbourethral gland, Cowper's gland, a little ahead and runs through the penis to its external opening called the urethral meters. And the secretion of this gland is called seminal plasma. The seminal plasma contains fructose, calcium, and 
some enzyme. It is to provide the nutrition to the spermatozoa while traveling through the female reproductive tract. The seminal plasma along with the sperms is called the semen. The secretion of vulvourethral glands also helps in the lubrication of the penis. External genitalia is the penis. It is made up of the spherical erectile tissue that helps in the erection of the penis. The enlarged tip of the penis is called the glans penis. It is covered by a loose fold of skin called the foreskin or purpose. So let's go into the details of the accessory glands and the seminal vesicles and fructose produces the sperm use this sugar for energy as I told and the prostaglandins includes the muscles for contracts. This is a part, this is the picture showing the accessory glands more clearly. Another accessory gland is one prostate gland. It secretes most of the liquid that part of semen sperm for granular secretions may help it buffer the low pH 3.5 to 4.0 of the vaginal fluid. The bulbourethral cowper's glands are a mucus or rich in lubricant. And the penis, as you can see, the glans penis, this is called the glans penis, the outer covering. And the urination takes place through this and the corpus Caverosum spongy tissue that fills with blood to make react penis re erect and uh, sexual intercourse and uh, glands the head of the end of the penis and the foreskin is the uh, that covers the uh, glands and uh, may be removed surgically in an operation called as circumcision. The accessory glands of male reproductive system include, as I said, a pair of seminal vesicles, a prostate glands, and pair of barboidectral glands and the cowper's gland. And the prostate glands provides an alkaline fluid that protects the sperm from harsh vaginal acids. The, and it produces the food from sperm, known as fructose. The cowper's glands produces clear lubricating fluid. Now here are some moving animations which shows the demarcations of the penis and the prostate gland and the pubis and the epididymis it is a testis and this is the testicles as you can see this is just for memorization now the testis secrete the male hormone testosterone now coming to the anatomy of the testis Testes are located outside the abdominal cavity within a pouch called the scrotum. Scrotum maintains the low temperature of the testes. Okay. 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius lower than the normal body temperature required for the spermatogenesis. Now the each testes so oval shape and length is 4 to 5 cm and width is 2 to 3 cm and covered by a dense covering called the tunica albuginea. Internally it is divided into about 250 compartments known as testicular lobules. Each lobule contains one to three highly coiled structural and functional units of testes called seminiferous tubules in which the sperms are produced. And seminiferous tubules is lined on its inside by two types of cells called the male germ cells called the spermatogonia and pseudoli cells. Male germ cells undergo meiotic divisions finally leading to the sperm formation. The pseudoli cells provide the nutrition to the germ cells. Intestinal space are present in the outside regions of the semiferous tubules which contain the small blood vessels and interstitial cells or the lytic cells. Lytic cells synthesize and secrete the testicular hormones called the androgen. One of them is the testosterone. So, the testosterone is the hormone of testis. It is a hormone produced by the human body. It is mainly produced in the men by the testicles. The testosterone affects the man appearance and sexual development. It stimulates sperm production as well as a man's sex drive. It also helps the build of muscle and bone mass. As I said very early in this lecture, and uh, the testosterone is necessary for the physical development in the boys. It is the primary androgen, and which is the term for any substance that stimulates or maintains masculine development during puberty. Testosterone is involved in many of the processes that transition a boy to the manhood, including the healthy development of the male sex organs, growth of facial and body hair, 
lowering of the voice, increase in height, increase in muscle mass, growth of the Adam's apple. The importance of testosterone is not limited to the puberty only. Through the Throughout the adulthood, the hormone is inter integral and in a variety of functions they are involved, such as maintaining libido, the action of sex, and the sperm production and maintaining the muscle strength and mass and promoting healthy bone density. Now, what is scrotum? The testes are located outside the abdominal cavity within a pouch called the scrotum. This is scrotum. And the scrotum maintains the low temperature of the testis, as I told, 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius lower than the normal body temperature required for the spermatogenesis. The outputting of the skin that contains both testes can be moved closer or to the further from body to help maintain temperature suitable for sperm formation. And this picture shows how the blood supply to the scrotum is maintained and it is located behind the penis and contains two testes it is temperature sensitive must be made the in cooler conditions the sperm must be made in the cooler condition 2 to 3 degrees celsius lower than the body temperature now the sperm the sperm cells are the gametes the sex cells that are produced in the testicular organ or the gonad of the male human beings and the animals. Like the female gamete oocyte, sperm cells carry a total of 23 chromosomes that are a result of a process known as meiosis. In process, in this process, in both the animals and human beings among many other organisms, these cells are involved in the sexual mode of reproduction which involves the interaction of the male and the female gametes. The general morphology of the sperm cells consists of the following parts that are a distinctive head, a midface or body and a tail. While there are general morphology includes the head, body and the tails, the cells do not necessarily look alike. This is an microscopic view, microscopic view as you can see and these are a front view and a side view and you can easily understand from this picture that as a result of various abnormalities that they may vary in shape and size while other differentiations may be observed or in any part of the cell head body or tail a normal sperm will have the following characteristics the smooth oval head and the head of a normally formed sperm and the smooth surface and the resembles the shape of an egg the head of the sperm measures about 2 to 2.5 to 3.5 mic uh, micrometer in diameter and 4 to 5.5 micrometer in length in micrometers. This results in a 1.50 to 1.70 width to width ratio. Length to width ratio is that 1.50 to 1.70 ratio. They are well developed through the acrosome and uh, that covers the 40 to 70 percent of the oval shaped head. It's the the head is covered with a material known as acrosome and uh, the slim middle section of the body that is approximately the same length as the head a thinner tail section that is about 45 micrometer in length this is 45 micrometer length this is thinner and the sperm cell consists of a head body and a mid section and the tail as i said and each of these parts is equipped with the various molecules and a small structure that allow the sperm as a whole to function properly okay it is a microscopic and a motile structure um, as you can see from these videos and uh, these are composed of three different parts and the whole body is covered by a plasma membrane. The sperm head contains an elongated haploid nucleus and the anterior portion is covered by a cap known as acrosome. And the middle piece contains numerous mitochondria which produce the energy for the sperm motility needed for the fertilization. That is very much important. And the tail helps the sperm cells to swim to reach the egg cell. Through this motility, this tail helps to move swim towards the egg during fertilization. The seminal plasma along with the sperm constitutes the semen. This is, I already discussed about this. Now the testosterone is produced and uh, by the 
hypothalamus and the pituitary gland control how much testosterone and the testis is produced and secreted this is this will be told in a few minutes and this is the site and the hypothalamus and uh, send the signal to the pituitary gland and re release the gonadotropic substances follicle and stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and luteinizing hormone LH stimulates the testosterone production. It is too much. If too much testosterone is produced, the hypothalamus alerts the pituitary gland to make less luteinizing hormone which tells the testis to decrease the testosterone level. This is how these are maintained and as you can see, this is hypothalamus, this is the pituitary gland. And from the anterior pituitary gland, this is the sperm control and the hormonal control is taken over by this hypothalamus. And hypothalamus is present in here if we cross-section our brain. Now, the two types of cancers developed in the male, and these are very much... Uh, fatal and the second leading cause of death in the American men is the prostate cancer and the detection is by the digital rectal exam by physician blood test is for prostate specific antigen PSA and tumor marker and the testicular cancer about 5000 US cases per year it's occurs can be detected by self exam men should check the testes monthly and check for hardening of lumps and changes should be reported to the physician. This is a site of cancer and this is a picture showing the normal prostate gland and uh, this is a cancerous one. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and goodbye.